have a whole lot of announcements. I'm really excited. Uh, we have we continue spiritual ends this week before I forget. Uh, company leadership. Uh, somebody from each company needs to come to get your questions for the night. Remember, it's 730 and 1930. You need to be in your hallways uh, for your conversation of the evening. Keep in mind that I wrote those questions before I heard uh, Reverend King speak. So if something else comes up during the conversation that you want to use in your conversation, then please use that. Like, don't go by it like it's a script. That's just a guiding question, right? So wherever the conversation takes you based on what uh, Reverend King talks about tonight, I want to, that's what I want you to talk about. So whatever's on your heart, whatever you're concerned with, whatever comes up, just let that lead you. Uh, besides that, I'm super excited. Uh, I'm going to pray first and I'll introduce the gentleman who will be speaking. Uh, loving God, we thank you so much this evening. We thank you for the opportunity where we can come together and listen to, to other people and other viewpoints. Lord, I pray that we would each listen attentively to lead into the Reverend King and what he has to say, uh, the words that you've given him that he's going to impart on us. So I just pray that everyone would just listen, take it to heart, and help us all to process it well this evening. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Good to see you. So I first met Pastor King uh, two and a half years ago, I guess now. Two and a half years ago, because uh, his son was in my Bible class, and his son was a student here, and then his son was a PG here, and now his son is in Eastern, Eastern Kentucky. Um, great family. Ever since I met Pastor King, I was just very... I guess enamored by him. Uh, he just has that personality that you just are kind of drawn to, you know, that kind of guy. And it's like you meet him one time, and you're like, this is the guy I want to get to know. So thankfully, we've been able to, I guess that's Mr. Dad before he graduated this place. Um, I, the point is, is that as we go on, our relationship has continued, and he's graciously agreed to come and speak with you all uh, tonight, tomorrow morning, and Wednesday morning. So I'm very excited, so I'm not going to, I'm going to let him introduce more of himself than that. Uh, I would just like to welcome uh, Pastor uh, King. First of all, let me say it is a, an honor and a privilege to be able to share with you on this Spiritual Emphasis Week. Uh, I, I've been in your shoes a long time ago, being in chapel services, and, um, and I really pray this week that there's something that is shared, something that is spoken, something that is pricked in your heart that will help you process life and find meaning out of life. As uh, Chaplain Cave said, my name is uh, Reverend Marvin King, and I've, we've known each other for two and a half years, and I'm very intimately connected with the Hargrave family. I consider myself to be uh, part of Hargrave, no matter how, uh, how far I am away from this place. My son played here, went to school here for two years. In two years, um, he learned a great deal, grew up in a lot of ways. Our family was tremendously blessed. And we consider Hargrave to be a very intricate part of our family. And so I'm here this week, these next three days, to spend time with you, to help you understand life and to process faith and to find meaning in what you are embarking upon in this season and journey of your life. Now, I want to just put this out here, where I come from. Uh, I'm not used to a quiet chapel or a quiet church service. So, on the count of three, I need you to talk back to me before I get started. And on the count of three, I want you to say, Preach Pastor King. One, two, three. Preach Pastor King! That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. So we got that out the way. So watch this. If you hear a good point, something connects with you, if something resonates with you, I want you to holler out and say, preach, Pastor King. All right? Can you do that for me? Yes, sir. All right. Now, last but not least, let's give a big hoorah shout out on the count of three. One, two, three. Hoorah! <laughs> tonight, tonight, this is what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to deal with Overcoming the grind. Overcoming the grind. And each of you are here students at Hargrave Military Academy. And it is not an easy place. There are times, I know, man, that's a preach pastor king right there. There are times you don't understand why you're here. 
There are times you want to give up. There are times you're angry. There are times, that's what I'm talking about. You can say that at any time. But tonight, what we're going to talk about is how do we overcome the adversity of our daily lives? How do we get past the grind, the daily discipline, the schedules, the up and down the hill? How do we get past that every day? And we want to look at our faith and we want to process what does this really mean? Why am I here? What is going on in my life? Why am I at heartbreak? What is my purpose? Why am I living? That's what I'm talking about. So tonight, that's what we're going to talk about. Then tomorrow morning, we're, that's what we're going to talk about. And on Wednesday morning, that's what we're talking about. Overcoming the grind. So before we get started, I want you to, I want you to watch the video screen. I want to play this video because I want to get into your hearts, your minds, your spirits about what it looks like to be grinding here at Hargrave Military Academy. To be a young person trying to find out what it means to be a young man and how to process faith. So give me the next five minutes of your undivided attention and then we'll get into our scripture lesson tonight. Good strength. 
next. Tonight, that video speaks a lot to what we are all going through. You can't see right now exactly where you're going or how you're going to get there. And some of you, it feels like you're carrying a 160-pound weight on your back. And tonight, as we look at our text tonight, in Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 19, I'll read the first nine verses for you. We find a man by the name of Saul, who's just like the guy in this video. He's he gets blinded, gets knocked down. He's going through life, thinking he's doing the right things, but yet he's doing them to the, to, in the wrong way. He's hurting innocent people. And, and God has a way of knocking him down, blinding him, and changing his life. In the Bible tonight, the Bible says, Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him of the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground, heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? The Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It's hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? The Lord said to him, Arise, go to the city. You will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand, brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Saul was blind. He was dealing with adversity. He was doing, he, he thought he was doing the right thing, but he, but, but he was doing it in the wrong way to the wrong people. He was a persecutor of Christians. He was, he was a, a, a murderer of Christians. And we find that God had a purpose and a plan for Saul's life. And what I want to tell you tonight is that every one of you in here, you have a purpose. No matter how hard your life has been, no matter how easy your life has been, no matter how many ups or downs you've been through, all of you have a purpose. And your mission in life is to find what that purpose is. And sometimes you don't know exactly what it looks like tomorrow. And so I want to begin to start helping you understand and processing how do I find my purpose in life? How do I develop into the man of character, integrity, strength, honesty? How do I become that man? How did I become that man that all the issues of my life, problems I've had, don't affect my future, but I use them as stepping stones, opportunities, ways to help make me better? As we look at the text, as we look at our Bibles, God had a purpose for Saul. And in order for that purpose to be fulfilled, God had to make some changes in his life. Saul goes to a place where he goes through adversity. He's knocked down. He's down on the ground. He loses his sight. And I don't know about you, if you've ever lost a, a family member and your world has been turned upside down, you've ever had some family issues and life has changed, sometimes things happen in our lives so that we can go in the right direction. Preach, Pastor King. Thank you, sir. That's what I need to hear. Sometimes sickness occurs. Injuries occur, not to knock you down, but to make you strong. And that's what adversity does. Adversity is not meant to make you defeated, because every last one of you in here are winners. Preach, Pastor King. Thank you, sir. But adversity makes you stronger. Adversity gives you the will to win, the strength to fight, the courage to persevere. That's what adversity does. And you have two choices. You can allow adversity to cause you to put your head down and walk defeated and never fulfill your purpose. Or you can use the weight of adversity to make you stronger. Thank you, sir. I'm a former athlete myself. 
played Drake University, college basketball. And one thing I learned when I was working out was that when you're in the weight room, sometimes you have to go through pain in order to get stronger. Sometimes you have to feel like you can't bear the weight by yourself in order to get stronger. Whenever we went through we weights, we would always have someone called a spa. Anybody been through weights? We have a spa. And the job of the spa was not to lift the weight for you, but to make sure you don't drop the weight on you and hurt yourself. So we would lift, and that spotter would not do anything but just have his hands on the wall. And the moment we felt like we could not lift anymore, all that spotter would do is just be right there to let us know that we can make it. And I came all the way from Lexington, Kentucky, to tell you at Hargrave Military Academy that no matter what you go through, the adversity that you deal with, you have a God that is always there and wants you to make it. Whenever you feel like you are by yourself, whenever you feel like no one knows what you're going through, you have a God that's right there. Thank you, sir. That's what I'm talking about. Now I feel like I'm at home. Saul was by himself, but God was always there. And I want you to understand something, young men, that no matter how many ups or downs you go through, God is always there. Sometimes we've got to go through some pain in order to keep moving forward. When you look at that video, that guy only wanted to go 20 yards. But he gets to the end zone, not because he's by himself, enduring by himself, because he has somebody pushing him. He has a coach that's pushing him. And I just want to tell you tonight, you've got a God that's pushing you. You're on this, you're on this hill in Chapel, Virginia, in Chapel tonight, and you've got a God that's pushing you. And you've got a preacher all the way from Lexington, Kentucky, that's pushing you. Because each and every one of you has greatness inside of you. If Paul would have never, if Saul would have never been knocked down off that horse, if he would have never been blinded, he would have never achieved his purpose. And I want to tell you tonight, fellas, sometimes you got to get knocked down before you can get back up. Preach, Pastor King. Sometimes you got to lose in order to win. Sometimes you've got to feel alone before you can appreciate a friend. Sometimes you've got to go through disappointments before you can ever feel encouraged. But I want to tell you tonight that the pain that some of us bear, some of us have some pains in here. Some of it is pains that nobody knows about. Some of it is pain from your childhood, pain from family, pain from friends, pain from bullying, pain from a lot of a low, some, from low self-esteem. But what I'm telling you today is that whatever pain you carry, it's only meant to be a catalyst, an instrument to, be, to make you stronger. Amen. Preach best you can. Thank you, sir. Sometimes when life gets hard, you just got to keep going. And the one thing I want to tell you, and it's in the final text, I, we didn't get a chance to read it. If you read the whole thing, chapter 9 of Acts, later on in the, in the text, Saul keeps moving. He doesn't let blindness keep him from moving forward. And what I'm telling you, gentlemen, is you've got to eliminate excuses. Every last one of us in here, we walked in. Every last one of us in here had two hands, minds, mouths, and eyes. You gotta use what you have so that you can move forward. Saul did not let excuses keep him down on the ground. But he found a way to be faithful and obedient. He found a way to follow the instructions of God. He found a way to change his life through obedience and faith. And what I'm challenging us tonight, fellas, for the next three days, 
I want you to do a, a, an inventory of your life. And I want you to ask yourself, are you on the right track? Or is God allowing some things to come in your life to refocus you? Because not everything, every obstacle, every adversity is meant to hurt you. Sometimes it's used to refocus you. And only you understand. Only you are going through. Only you experience what you're going through. But it's, it's either to develop you or to refocus you. As we look at our text, our big idea tonight, the big idea, is sometimes we have to endure some hard times in order to fulfill our destiny. Thank you, Pastor King. Thank you, sir. Sometimes you don't know why you're in the situation you're in, but there's always a silver lining on the dark cloud. If you could ever refocus your mind to understand and find the good in the situation and find out what it is that you can learn from the situation, because every situation is a learning opportunity. Gentlemen, Hargrave is just a stop on your destiny. Hargrave is just a place that shapes you and molds you and develops you and gets you to think about all the things that God really wants to do in you. That each of you, every one of you, are unique and special and you are appreciated and valued regardless of what you feel. Amen. That's what this text shows us. And sometimes adversity distracts us from understanding that God is really working in us. So here's some things to think about as I come to a close tonight. Nothing replaces hard work. I know sometimes we want the easy way out. I know sometimes when it comes down to doing military drills, try to find the easy way out. Think the tech officers don't see it. Try to cut corners when we clean up the barracks. You think I don't know about this? I'm fresh out of this stuff, man. I, at least y'all still have to clean up your barracks, right? Of course. That's what I thought. Still got to have inspections in the morning? Of course. Yep. That's what I thought. Sometimes it's easy to try to cut corners. But sometimes adversity is the very thing that God will bring into our lives to help us understand that there are no shortcuts to doing what's right. And that's why sometimes we have to carry the weight of life. Because God is really shaping us and developing our character. Because let me say, let me share this with you. It's hard to be successful when you have bad character. And God has a way of developing character before he ever blesses us and, and helps us fulfill our destiny. God allows the suffering, gentlemen, to build our character. And in life, you ought to expect some battles. As a matter of fact, in our Bibles, it teaches us that we ought to expect some hard times. If you expect a life of no struggle, then listen, you are deceiving yourself. You are fooling yourself. Life gets hard. But there's a purpose to the struggle. When you plant a seed in the ground, it struggles to come out of the ground. But once it comes out of the ground, it has deep roots. Sometimes it's hard to knock it down. There's a story of a, 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 that I read in a magazine. A guy was talking about how they used to build ships back in the day, these big massive sailboats. And he said that in order to build the mast of a sailboat, the mast is the big, the, big, uh, the big pole that holds the sail in place. What they would do is they would go out into the forest and they would find a tree. They would find a tree that they felt was good enough to hold the sail through the storms, the winds, the rain. They would find this tree and what they would do is they would clear all the other trees from around them. And it would only be that one tree standing there in the middle of a forest, in the middle of a field, and it would take all the wind, all the rain, all the battering, it would take all the storms. But when that tree endured the storms, it was then that the shipbuilders knew that that was the right tree to put on a ship. Because if it could endure storms in the field, it can endure storms at sea. 
Well, what am I trying to tell you tonight as I close? That the storms in your lives, the things you've been through, the hardships you have endured, are only meant to make you stronger for the next storm. Because if you can endure the storms and obstacles and adversity that you've been through already, then it shows that you're still a survivor. And as long as you are a survivor, then we ought to look at the next challenge with opportunity. We ought to look at the next challenge like it's not going to knock me down. Heartbreak won't knock you down. But it will build you up. And every challenge, every obstacle, every, every opportunity that you experience leaving this place will only make you stronger. But in order to do that, guys, you've got to keep moving forward. If you want to make, if you want to endure the grind, you've got to keep moving. You can't let anybody stop you. Don't let negativity stop you. Don't let lack of seeing what tomorrow holds stop you. Because make no mistake about it, life is a grind. But this week, we're going to encourage each other to get through the grind. Preach Pastor Dean. Thank you, sir. Besides that, company leadership, make sure you come to get your questions. We'll have our conversation at 7.30. Uh, if anybody is interested, has some, something touch your heart, or something you want to talk to Reverend King about, I'm sure that he wouldn't mind sticking around up here for a couple minutes if anybody wants to shake hands and anything you want to ask him or say to him. Uh, besides that, I'm going to pray for it, and we'll be dismissed. Loving God, Lord, thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you so much for Pastor King's uh, motivation, encouragement, and his willingness to come down here and speak with all of us this evening and for the next two days. Lord, thank you for the words and for the passion that you put on to him. So I pray for the conversations tonight. I pray that you would allow us all to be real with one another, that we can develop friendships and talk about making it through that grind together uh, as a brotherhood and through as individuals and in our group. So I just pray that you just instill with this good conversation so we can learn what it means to make it through this thing called life and come out on top. Uh, thank you again for this time and for all these young men. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, man. Of course. Attention. Company commanders, take charge. Give your company's back to